This is our first session of an executive coaching process that will last months. Uh, for some of you, if the results are inspiring and the experience is what you're looking for, we may work together for years. Now, we've talked about the results you want, and those results are inspiring. They're compelling. These are outcomes worth having, worth working for, worth making part of your life. There's a lot of hard work to be done. Some of it will be internal with how we think and speak and use our bodies and take care of ourselves. Much more of the work will be with and through other people. That is the most powerful and scalable way to get results with and through other people. Now some of the activities that you'll be engaging with through this process are going to be fun. But much of it, we might as well admit it now, may seem like drudgery. I mean, that just seems to be the nature of anything worth doing. Sometimes it's fun, compelling, engaging. Other parts, you just have to grind it out. Some years ago, when I was working at General Electric, I was on the telephone. I remember it vividly. I was talking to my third manager in, I think, less than three months. And he was explaining to me the format in which he wanted my sales forecast. Well, I listened as patiently as I could. And finally, I pointed out to him that this was the third time in a few months that a new manager had asked me for a new format for my sales report. Probably wasn't a very polite or generous thing to say to him because after all, that was reminding him of how little time he probably had in his job. I told him I'd really rather be out selling, and that's probably better for the company, too. Well, he'd heard this one before, and he said to me something that has stuck with me ever since and has been useful in many situations. Maybe it'll be useful for you, too. He said, Tony, selling is so much fun, I'd probably do it for free. I figure the company pays me to do the paperwork. I want us to take a few minutes now, early in our group executive coaching program, to prepare you for those less appealing aspects of the work you'll be doing together by putting them into what I've found to be an empowering, useful context. A useful analogy occurred to me a few years ago while I was watching a program on PBS, what we used to call educational TV. It was called Secrets of the Ancient Engineers. They were talking about how more than 500 years ago, the Inca civilization in Peru built amazing cities in magnificent temples high in the Andes. You may have heard of, for instance, the Temple of the Sun at Machu Picchu. The huge stones of its walls were so well fitted that they have survived centuries of weather, war, and earthquakes. Not only do they still stand, but the joints are so perfect, so well formed, that you could not slide a razor, a piece of paper, in the joints of these stones. And the Incas did this without steel tools without using any kind of mortar or binding agent, just by fitting the stones together so well. But that's not the most amazing part. The temple is not made of stone, cut from the 8,000 foot mountain on which it stands. The stone is from quarries thousands of feet below and miles away across a raging river through dense jungle. The bottom of the mountain, a mountain 8,000 feet tall, across a river, through a jungle. And these are not stones you just pick up and carry. These are, some of them, the size of a car. They weigh thousands of pounds. How did the Inca do this when they did not use the wheel and axle? They didn't have strong draft animals like horses or oxen. Now this was such a mystery 
that some people even considered supernatural or extraterrestrial explanations. This has been a mystery since Machu Picchu was discovered by Westerners in 1911. Well, the producers of this PBS program set out to solve the mystery. And they did it in a novel, but seems like should be obvious manner. They asked the local Masons, the people who are the direct descendants of the Incas, how would you do this? Well, the answer was, look at your feet. Do you notice the cobblestone roads that we have all over the place? These were built by the Incas too. And if you notice, you can put a large block of stone on this stone roadway. And it slides pretty easily. Especially if you put down some leaves or animal fat to grease the path. They tried it. It worked great. Slides right across and up. So they had these well-fitted stone roadways. And they had miles of them all over the empire, but also up this mountain to the Temple of the Sun. Pretty simple. But there is a catch. Based on the population and the size of the roads and the hardness of the stone and the placement of the quarries, their best estimate is that it took 15 or 20 years minimum to build the roads from the quarry up the mountain to the Temple of the Sun. Now consider yourself in this situation. You're the leader of a successful Inca city. You assemble the citizens for an important announcement. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. I got to tell you that I'm pleased. I'm honored to have you all together. And I appreciate that you've come out to be with me today. First of all, I want to congratulate the farmers on another record harvest. We have more grain stored than ever before. We've exceeded our stretch goal for this fiscal year. Give yourselves a hand. Excellent, excellent. I appreciate it. Oh, and I also want to recognize the raiding parties. Great job subduing those neighboring tribes. We couldn't do it without you. In fact, there's no point storing up grain if those savages are going to take it away from us. So, big thank you to the raiding parties. Thank you, warriors. Well, the time has come to celebrate our success, to mark the occasion with an enduring display. Look up, would you please, at the sacred mountaintop where the sun aligns always for us on the longest day of the year. I say the time has come for us to build, for all to see, expressing our greatness and success, a magnificent temple on the top of that mountain. Oh, the crowd goes wild. They love this idea. So inspiring. A massive, enduring, stone temple to the sun on the mountaintop. Yay! Let's do it! Great, 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 great! Well, I'm glad you're all behind me on this. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, there is a, one or two things we need to do before we start on that temple. We need to build a road from the quarry to the mountaintop. And our streets and highway department has a budget that estimates about, oh, one and a half generations of Busting rocks, carrying rubble, clearing jungle. Oh, yeah, yeah, and we need to twist a few oh, a few hundred miles of rope from vines to, to build bridges and tow cables. And if we get started right now, maybe your children will be able to build the actual temple, and one or two of you might live long enough to see the temple itself. Now who's with me? Well, that's pretty daunting, isn't it? How do you get a city, a team? even yourself, to persist through long periods of difficult labor without reward or even, even the guarantee of a reward. Working on something that is great, but even if it succeeds, you might not be there to see it. Now this preparation, this pre-work, the drudgery, the busting of rocks, I submit to you, 
is not something you need to shortcut or evade or even just to endure, survive through. Instead, connect these tasks with your vision. It's not something in the way of who you are, preventing you from being who you want to be, having what you want to have. It's all one piece. There's a classic story about someone visiting a cathedral. He runs into someone and says, what's your job here? He says, I'm the chief architect. Wow, what do you do? Well, it's up to me to make sure this structure is stable and sound and that all the measurements match what's actually being built. Oh, great. The visitor wanders a bit more and sees someone carving stone, making a statue. He says, what does it you do? And stone carver says, well, I chip away stones and polish it and, until it matches this drawing. Finally, the visitor encountered someone who had a huge smile. It seemed full of energy, carrying a broom. He was the person who swept up the dust in the stone chips. Probably the person with the least skill, but the most satisfaction. And he said, hey, what is it you do here? And the sweeper replied, every day I come here, pick up my broom, and build a monument to eternity for all humanity. I am working on something that will inspire my grandchildren's grandchildren. And I can see them coming here now and thanking the people who made this happen. Now who had the best job? Who was in the best position to appreciate what was going on? Remember, please, at every stage of this executive coaching program, in every moment of your life, what am I up to? For the sake of what do I labor? Make sure it's connected to what really matters and that you can articulate and have the experience of something that is worth using your life for. And if you want to get things done on a grand scale, it has to be something worth other people using their lives for. If you're not up to something big enough and present to its immensity, don't be surprised when no one else wants to use slices of their limited time to make it happen. Are you living or merely not dead? Each moment you know yourself to be at work creating a compelling future, you have the privilege of experiencing that future now. Think about that. We tend to act as though what has happened in the past and what's going on now determines how we feel in the present. But it's not. It's what we expect next that gives us our experience now. Do you remember that moment when you're dating someone and you're starting to think maybe he or she is the one? You're falling in love? The elation that you feel all the time? How the whole world looks better, brighter, more beautiful? Everyone is easier to get along with. It's not because of what's happening now. That person might not even be with you in the moment. It's because of the future that is calling you forth. The possible relationship, the love, what could happen with this wonderful new person. Making you feel great now. That's available to you. A future that you believe you're actively engaged in bringing about gives you excitement now. Satisfaction now gets you through the hard work, the busting of the rocks. Whatever you do, if it's worthwhile, you'll spend a lot of time busting rocks and building roads. Make sure the road leads somewhere worthwhile. If it does, you're not just building a temple. You are already worshiping with every this podcast and other executive coaching podcasts are available 
on the blog of Tony Mayo at www.tonymayo.com. Executive Coaching at www.tonymayo.com. This podcast is copyrighted by Tony Mayo, 2008. All rights are reserved. Oh,